Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those of you who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I'm unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. Today I'm going to compare two very similar pens. One is on loan from my pen friend and Nibmeister guru, Jack Hernandez. He loaned me this Platinum 3776 with a 14 karat gold two-tined music nib before Christmas, and I've hung on to it even after I did the review. I figured he is so busy fussing about with a loaned, triple-stacked, 18 karat gold King Eagle Pelican nib on a Pelican Raiden Sunrise Red M1000 that he might not notice that I've not returned this pen yet. I wrote with that pen for about 30 seconds. It's incredible. I have two reasons for not returning your pen yet, Jack. And the first is, I like it too much. The second, more reasonable excuse is, I wanted to do a comparison video between the 3776 and this Natami Inception. I did a review of the Natami Inception in August 2019, around the time they first came out. I was intrigued by the faceted cap and barrel, the rose gold hardware on a couple of the versions, and um, adaptation, I'll call it, of the platinum slip and seal cap sealing mechanism. At the time, I was jonesing for a 3776 Bourgogne, and this seemed like a less expensive alternative, at least to try and figure out if the 3776 was the size of pen in which I wanted to invest real money. So I bought the Natami, reviewed it, and my wife fell in love with it, and it's been inked up and on her desk ever since. Now that I have a real 3776 in my hands, let's put them side by each and see how they compare. Right now. <music> Now that I've reviewed both of these pens, and I'll link those reviews in the description below, but what I want to do today is contrast and compare these two fountain pens, show some size comparisons and some side-by-side -side measurements, and then do some writing samples. But it isn't the writing samples that I really want to concentrate on this video. The nibs of these two pens couldn't be more different, so it's really comparing apples to oranges. I'm more interested in how the pens stack up in terms of their size, balance, features, and how they perform in the hand, both posted and unposted. So I'm going to do my best side-by-side -side overview of the parts and features of the two pens simultaneously. So bear with me as this will take a bit of a steady hand. Look at that. Steady as a rock. Yeah, but I shoot with this hand. First, a little bit of 411 about each of the pens, starting with the 3776 Century. This pen is well known to even those pen enthusiasts who have only partially fallen down the rabbit hole of pen collecting. The 3776, released in 1978 and designed by Huraro Umeda, known as Mr. Fountain Pen in Japan, was named for the height of the highest peak in Japan, that's Mount Fuji. The Platinum 3776 gathered fountain pen model is a reproduction of that early model. The 3776 is Platinum's longest running model, having been in production and refined over the years since 1978. In 2010, in anticipation of their 100th anniversary in 2019, Platinum updated the famous 3776 model and renamed it the 3776 Century. The most significant upgrade to the pen was the addition of the new cap sealing mechanism they called Slip and Seal, which is a spring-loaded cap liner mounted inside the cap. Platinum have added this mechanism to most of its pen models up and down the product line. Platinum releases a new finished material in a limited 3776 Century Pen of the Year edition each year. The 2020 limited edition model is this translucent purple with diamond facets in the cap and barrel called the Shiyun. The pen is priced as you'd expect for a limited edition. The 3776 Century is often recommended as the entry level for gold nib pens. My entry level 14 karat gold fountain pen was this Pilot E95S. 
And my first gold nibbed platinum was this president with an 18 karat gold nib. And the two nibs couldn't be more different in writing or in looks. The Pilot is smooth and glassy, and the President is very smooth writing experience, but has a pencil-like feedback, which is uniquely platinum and uniquely wonderful. The Music Nib on the 3776 has the same kind of feedback. To sum up, the Platinum 3776 Century is a collector's dream, with plenty of history, many, many nib varieties, and a bewildering variety of finishes and variations. On the other hand, the Natami Inception comes in six variations with one nib choice. Fine. The color options are clear with rose gold trim, clear with silver trim, dark translucent blue with silver trim, translucent green with rose gold trim, translucent red with rose gold trim, and aqua blue with silver trim. They sell for $21.50 US with $2 shipping in Bobby's Etsy store. Get all six for $130 and I bet he'll combine shipping for two bucks. It's still $60 cheaper than a single 3776. There are a few interesting things about the Natami, however. They have appropriated the Platinum's patented slip and seal mechanism right in there. I'll show it to you in more detail in a moment. Uh, and it comes it comes with a converter which platinum will include for an extra twenty dollars and the cap and the barrel are faceted which give it a very unique look and feel there are a number of editions of the 3776 that have faceted bodies but as far as I know they're all limited editions now let's look at them together Overall, both pens are cigar-shaped fountain pens, and their size and shape are very similar, but not identical. They weigh the same, but the Natami is just slightly longer by a little more than a millimeter. From the top, we see identical domed cap finials separated from the cap by gold metal rings, which secure the clips in place, and the clips are almost, but not quite identical in size and shape. The folds on the tip of the Natami are a little bit larger, but both clips are springy and usable. The caps taper up to completely different cap bands. The 3776 has a small gold band, then a larger tapering gold band, which doesn't go all the way to the end of the cap. And it has hashtag 3776 platinum and made in Japan uh, stamped into it in very sharp letters and that hashtag 3776 means number 3776 for those of you born after the invention of the Twitter uh, I found another tweet from a student at Sheldon's lecture uh, Dr. Cooper has taken a relatively boring subject and managed to make it completely insufferable <laughs> Plus, he looks like a giant insect. The Natami has a single cap band, which is wide and tapered and ends at the end of the cap. And it has Flight of Time and 1919 uh, stamped into it. My guess as to the significance of the 1919 is that Natami or Hiro, Jinhao, Hongdian, Delake, whichever Chinese copycat company makes this pen. It's Natami's in-joke about the Platinum 3776 Century. Platinum made this model of pen in 2010, nine years before their 2019 centennial. Natami came out with their copy in 2019 on the centennial of Platinum's Wait for it! <laughs> you got it. Inception. I can't find any instance of this pen being called Inception by retailers anymore. It is just called a Japanese style Natami fountain pen. But when I bought it, it was called the Inception. So maybe Platinum didn't find the joke funny. You have absolutely no sense of humor, do you? This is not funny! Who won the bloody war anyway? What about Flight of Time? Perhaps it represents how quickly time has flown since 1919. 
or perhaps it refers to how much time it took them to copy Platinum's flagship pen from 2010 to 2019. Who knows? It's an inscrutable phrase like the temperature of writing. Both pens have a small step down to barrels which taper down to rounded ends. But the Natami doesn't have a gold ring separating the end finial like the Platinum does. And at the bottom of the Natami you can see there's a divot there. That's a gate from the injection molded plastic. The Platinum doesn't have any gates showing anywhere on the plastic. The Natami cap takes one, two full turns to uncap, where the Platinum 776 takes one and a half turns to uncap. And then we see two very similar tapering barrels with gold rings at the bottom and chamfered lips at the top. The Natami chamfered edge is a little bit smoother than the very angular straight edged chamfered lip at the top of the uh, platinum section. Let's get a closer look at both nibs. Both nibs and plastic feeds are friction fit inside the sections. The 3776 is 14 karat gold when the Natami is rose gold plated steel. The 3776 is a two-tined music nib while the Natami is a fine nib. This is the only Natami branded onto the pen anywhere and it says flight of time here again on the nib as well as the F for fine. And the nib has some interesting crescent engravings. It is interesting that Natami didn't try to recreate the unique flatted uh, arch of the platinum nib. I think the flattened profile of the uh, platinum 3776 nib really shows off the beauty of that gold. The sections unscrew to reveal converters. The 3776 as I mentioned uh, and the converter is not included with the pen. You have to pay for it an extra 20 bucks but it is a really nice converter and it is a platinum proprietary uh, converter and it will take proprietary platinum cartridges. The Natami has the converter included with the pen which is the same size as a pen BBS converter. In fact this is a pen BBS converter and the Natami will accept Lamy cartridges and two Parker short cartridges piggybacked. Interestingly the Natami won't accept a Parker long cartridge which are the more available ones from Parker and the Lamy cartridge really needs to be pushed to get it into the section. It's good that the section is metal. The 3776 has the aforementioned slip and seal sealing mechanism which engages with the section on a spring. The Natami has what appears to be an identical system. Here's the Platinum Preppy which has the same slip and seal next to the Natami so you can see them. I'll use the blunt end of my syringe to uh, give it a push so you can see it engage with that spring and here is the preppy with its spring mechanism in the cap and you can see when you snap the preppy in it engages that spring and seals the cap when you turn the Natami you'll see that spring engage now this one you can't see it because it's opaque black but when you cap the pen when you get to about there you feel some friction uh, you can feel that section engaging with the slip and seal mechanism inside. I've had this pen inked uh, since I got it on loan from Jack. I ran out of the Krishna Sun at Night Sky that uh, he had loaded it with but I've re-inked the pen and have left it for days at a time uh, without writing with it and it writes the first time every time when I use it. The cap of the 3776 posts deeply and securely and very nicely and I prefer to write with this pen posted because unposted it is on the short side it's not uncomfortable unposted and it's very nice and balanced uh, but it still feels better as uh, you get better length uh, in your hand. 
with it uh, posted like this for me anyway but it works equally as well both ways the Natami however doesn't post either deeply or securely and that just falls off uh, so it just doesn't post I suspect it doesn't post because of the facets and you have those round threads going on to those edges of the facets and it just doesn't uh, stick to the barrel at all this is the single biggest drawback on this pen in my opinion the extra millimeter of length in the pen unposted and extra millimeter uh, of length in the section really make some difference here as the pen fits nicely in the hand unposted otherwise I wouldn't like this pen so much but that actually feels very nice and I don't mind writing with this pen unposted it's not my pen to write with anyway the cap threads behind the section on both pens are not sharp and do not interfere with your grip in any way now let's look at some size comparisons and here we are with the Natami Inception with the Platinum 3776 and a Platinum President a Pen BBS 308 and a Visconti Van Gogh Starry Night now let's look at them posted so here they are posted them that will post the Natami there's no point in even trying to put it on there it won't stay on but the other pens actually post very nicely you see both platinums post deeply and securely and make the pens a comfortable length uh, in the hand I find the president with its thicker section and uh, girthier body to be much more comfortable than the 3776 and the 308 uh, from pen BBS is also a lovely poster and very comfortable in the hand and of course the Van Gogh has a number five size nib compared to the number six size nibs on the other pens let's actually look at them all unposted as well because I think that's significant and here are all five pens unposted you can see that the 3776 century is the shortest of all five pens unposted the rest of the pens are fairly comfortable in the hand uh, unposted the 308 being the longest but all the pens but the Natami will post and make the pens comfortable as well now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample and we're back with the writing portion of the review this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Natami Inception Flight of Time in red with rose gold trim and a fine steel nib Natami Inception with a fine steel nib this is the second Natami nib feed and section that's been on this pen when I first received this pen it was bent it got damaged in shipping and Bobby the Etsy vendor that I bought it from he sent me another nib feed and section for it at no charge I've since put the first nib into my Conklin Durograph and it matches the rose gold trim on this pen very nicely and the nib is head and shoulders above both Bach nibs that I got with my Conklin the medium that was on the pen and the Duraflex nib I bought extra both those nibs were crap you are crap this second Natami nib needed no adjustment or smoothing um, and it is wet and smooth and Wynn loves it she's been writing with this pen for about a year and a half but when I borrowed it back from her for this video I went to add to more ink and the converter had broken inside uh, so I replaced it with this pen BBS converter here's the original and you can see where it broke uh, right here at the nipple and there are those pieces they just kind of that little black plastic insert that's at the end of that nipple this just the end of it just kind of shattered so uh, I don't know whether that was from the ink um, 
or just a, a cheap converter. I don't know. <laughs> so this ink is Hiroshizuku. Yamabudo. This pen doesn't skip. It's been open and exposed here for a bit. And here is the swatch for the Rojizuku Yamabudo. It's a lovely magenta color with a, a gold kind of a sheen and with some Robert Oster Muddy Dragon and some Diamine Merlot. I've been told that that's how to pronounce this name. Diamine not diamine. Now it's pronounced Igor. But they told me it was Igor. Well, they were wrong then, weren't they? As to line variation, that's no pressure. That's a little bit of pressure. It's very stiff. But again, it's very smooth and relatively wet. This line in my Richard Binder uh, chart comes out as 0.4 millimeters, which is a Western extra fine and a Japanese fine to medium. Now let's look at the platinum. Three, seven, seven, six, and this has a music nib, fourteen karat gold. Again, this is like comparing apples and oranges between these two nibs. The fourteen karat gold music nib is just too nice not to show in action, and the ink here is Pelican. Edelstein Sapphire and this nib is plenty wet and smooth and you can probably hear that feedback uh, it sounds like it might be scratchy it's not. That sound that you're hearing is more of a feeling like uh, a graphite pencil on paper. It's very interesting, very unique, and strangely satisfying. So what about these two pens? This is where I talk about likes and dislikes, but I've already spoken about both of these pens. I like them both very much. But I wanted to see them next to each other to answer some specific questions I had before I ever even tried a 3776. And that was, is the Natami Inception close enough to the 3776 to get the idea of how I might like a 3776 before I took the plunge and bought one? I was essentially using the Natami as a test case. If the pen was too short or light in the hand, it might deter me from buying the Platinum. And I had my eye on the 3776 Bourgogne. Now I can answer all of those questions. Yes, the pen is slightly short in the hand, uh, and the section is slightly thinner and shorter than my preference. That's why I skipped buying a 3776 and went for my Platinum President instead. And I'm not sorry. However, the Natami isn't like the 3776 in two key ways. The Natami doesn't post well at all, and the 3776 posts well and is nicely balanced and makes the pen long enough in the hand. And the gold nib on the Platinum 3776 is definitely worth the extra cost. It isn't that it is gold so much as it is a Platinum nib, and they are extraordinarily unique and worth the try. Of course, I have my Platinum President uh, for that Platinum nib now. Uh, so, do I need to get a 3776? Yes! 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 Ah! 
I'll have what she's having. Do I still have the desire to get one? Well, perhaps. With all of the cool varieties out there of the 3776, I think I might still have to get one. Maybe the reissue of the 1978 3776 gathered. They are expensive, I know, but wow, that's one cool looking bit of platinum nostalgia right there. And you know, inquiring minds and all that. And there you have it. Thanks go out to Jack Hernandez for the generous long-term loan of this wonderful 3776 Century with that gorgeous music nib. And uh, I'll get this pen back to you real soon now. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.